Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Reliant Regal Restoration. Not the Mark V, which is sitting here, but the 325. A small fact about the 325 actually, since it just jumped to my mind. They were called the 325 because of were three wheels and 25 horsepower. Quite a nerdy little fact maybe, but uh, just to establish a little difference between Mark V and the 325. As well as that's a side valve and this is an overhead valve. In fact, it was the first mass-produced aluminium overhead valve engine. So yeah, anyway, today's episode. The last time we was on this, we was doing the fiberglass repair up here. Now, a lot has happened since then. One, we're inside now, and my super van's away to the painters. Pardon me. Um, two, it's got the doors in it again. They are purely in for one reason. And I was wanting to make sure that I got the carve right on this repair. Because the cells have been fixed now. This one I've cut, repositioned it, and fiberglassed it. And the other side is back on. So it actually looks like it should again. It's got the shape of a regal. And it's got the lovely carves of the roof. Which, I do really like these styles. I like the old round ones. I mean, I've always wanted one of them. So getting the Mark V was brilliant. But I do like these styles. I never was a fan of them until I had my 330. And then I realised how amazing they are. And now that my 330 is in the local Grampian Transport Museum, I keep missing it. So this is brilliant to have this here. But I'll, I'll show you what else we've done at the other side to get it all pieced in places. The front end's all fixed. All the cracks are gone. The hole in the number plate's gone. So the main reason it came in here was I've taken a bumper mold off of it now so i taped up all the back end i'll stick the photos in at the end of this video and you can see the process of doing that so we taped it all with foil tape waxed it waxed it next day gel coated it later on in the day fiber glassed it and then i released it last thing that day so it's all been done it looks rather nice i've got a mold with a bumper for a 325 so if anyone needs a bumper for a 325 i can make one as well as if I need one, I can make one. So, I've also been in the boot a bit, having a rummage around. I still can't work out where the boot stay went. What I do know is, because this is the boot stay, and I know it was fixed up in this nuke somewhere, and it must have been somewhere about here it hooked in. But it's on my to-do list to find out where about it was. So, what I'll do is, I'll take you for a little wander, and I'll show you the work that's been done to the regal. So, at the back end, you'll notice a lot of dust over at that side, at the driver's side. That is because I've taken the sander and discovered the overrider hole. So this car originally had overriders all round. I've also done some investigation into the paint. And it looks like it could have been this colour, but I'm not sure. Because when you go to the front, it's blue. So as you'll see here, what I've realised with this car is the door shut lines on the passenger side are rubbish. But the holes are exactly the same size. I've measured them, checked them and everything. So all I can think is when they left Reliant, they were never good fit in doors. So I've also got a little patch to do. You can just see it down there. What I'm going to do is... You can look at the Mark V a second till I get the camera out. There we go. These, by the way, are gloves that aren't for the bin, but they are fiberglassing gloves. In case you wonder why the Mark V is covered in bits. So, we've done that. If we come round to the driver's side, you'll notice the door's in place again, but also the sill is on. So this, the driver's door does need a repair. The bottom of it is totally ripped off. This needs fiberglassing still, which is a simple repair. And the cell is in place, so it needs a bit of fiberglass done at the back as well, because a clamp was there. This panel is all repaired and in position. And around the front. Unfortunately, my garage door is shut, so I can't get a good view. You can just see the repair to the front where I've put a new bit of fiberglass into the number plate area 
Now we saw this corn has been glass fibred into shape as well. So it's it's taking shape. So there's one small crack on the back to sort still, which is round there somewhere. And there's one big job to do, which is not today's episode. This will be a future one. And the big job, we have to come down here and basically, if I hold the camera here, you can see the daylight and the crack right along the bottom of the regal. So this is because I think at one point the, the car has been used to store sheep feed in it. Because I found sheep feed in the boot. So all that's happened is the weight of the feed, you can actually see it perfect there. It's burst the boot right across there and up the sides, the top of the arches, both sides. So that's my next job to do repair in fiberglass ways, well the last big job. And after that, the shell's new enough fiberglass wise structurally sound. So yeah, that's one job for the future episodes coming up. As well as we'll have a few bits and pieces to do here and there, like say the doors and stuff like that. No, that's okay, I thought that was something wrong. But this leads us on to today's episode. This is the pipework of the carburetor. Now, unfortunately the carburetor on this car was goosed, I think is the best way to put it. Let me go and grab the tripod, because there's no point in us jumping back and forth. So the carburetor was totally goosed on it. Um, I've got it in my vice just now, and I thought, why not let you guys join in? And we'll strip it down and see what's actually left of it. I don't think there's any use in this carburetor. I have a spare one in the shed, which will be going on it. But here we go. Here is the Z Solex. I will flip you around so you have a better look at it. This is the Solex that was on the engine. This is the manifold as well. And you may be thinking, why am I clamping an aluminium manifold in a steel vice? Blah, 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 blah. But hang fire a minute. So if we look down here... <laughs> the bottom parts of the manifold have actually snapped off at both sides. This was like this when I got it. So, yeah. Basically, it's scrap. What I'm going to do is, before I put the camera on to film taking this to bits, I'm going to have a quick sort out and clear my bench, because I've been doing brakes on a car on my granddad's Austin Healy Sprite the last few days. So, tools have just been coming home late at night and being chucked on my bench. So I'll go and have a quick tidy up, and I'll bring you back when we're ready to go and strip this. Right guys, I've had this quick clean up on the bench. I still need to give it a good clean up later. The crank for the engine's actually behind the camera. I'll let you see it briefly before we start digging into this carburetor. Because this could be an annoying little thing to get to bits. So, here's the crank out the seven, the 600 engine. I'm unsure if it's usable still. I'm think, quite hopeful it is. I've got someone that can polish it, which might be enough to get it operational again, so we'll see. So let me just put that back for it's out of the way. And first of all, we need to try and get these nuts off. Well, they're, they're actually um, screws, but they've been in here as long. Getting them out of there is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So... What I'm going to do is, I've got oxyacetylene nowadays, although it is one of those, I think it's called, an oxy kit it's called. So, what we're going to do is, is I'll turn on the, the gas and everything, and we're going to get vice grips, because I'll be quite honest with you, you will not get these to turn with a screwdriver. So, what I want to do is grip them like that now this might jump off when I try to heat it I try to move it so the flame we've got there the oxyacetylene turn off the blow lamp oh and don't do that. There we go. Now 
Right, and all we're going to do is gently heat up where this bolt is. And we're not wanting to cause any damage, we just want to heat the aluminium up. Because as you'll know, when stuff's left to sit this long, it tends to not want to come to bits. Especially if it's aluminium and steel, because they react against each other and corrode. So we're not only just heating the, the area that it will be threaded into, we're heating the area that it's just passing through as well. I'll just like that, that's what we want. That's moving quite happily. Now to save any accidents, turn that off and we're going to put it where it will not cause any problems. So I think we can do that with pointed pliers now. But this is the kind of thing this kit has been infallible for because before I would have heated it with the plumber's blow lamp probably not heat it enough tried to turn it, snapped the bolt and went oh bother if this comes to bits and this is actually spotless inside I will be amazed Because I never seen, well the engine when it came to bits, I was amazed with it, because it was just, there was anything inside that it made you went, oh I can't use this engine now. I mean the engine, although the sump was rotted off of it, everything came to bits, no problem. I mean even like that, that just came out, no problem at all. Now the other one does have a slot head on it. I'm probably going to chance my luck with this. Yeah, let's chance our luck because that's a good fit. Right. So we'll just do the same with this one, give it a good heat up and make sure that it's all as free as it'll get. Now obviously I will state the obvious here, never do this to a carburetor that's just newly come off a vehicle. I am doing this to this carburetor because it has been sitting like this probably for the good, well, it hasn't been run since the 80s so I know this carburetor's definitely got nothing in it oh. but what you don't want to do is do this to a vehicle that's got petrol in it and then blow the bloomin' petrol up you definitely don't want that that's that one out. There's one more around here, which I think we're going to have to put this one on too. Now, unfortunately, I can't get a grip with that. Oh, I actually, not so much injured my arm at work. I'm not really sure what I've done to it, because for some reason it doesn't like lifting things sometimes and the next time it'll lift something no problem and you'll be thinking what's happening now so yeah I was struggling to actually grip that bolt there so I'm just heating the last one and this should release the top if this bolt comes out 
is as well. I really can't believe the luck of this. Now, before I stop the heat, I'm making sure it's definitely going to come out. Like so. So you want pointed pliers. How easy this is coming to be a bit of heat is actually amazing me. Now, you may be wondering why have I not taken it off the manifold yet? There's one good thing. If all it's on the manifold, it's easier to clamp in place. After I take it off the manifold, it's a lot more trickier. So, the last two bolts I take out are the last ones I can get out hopefully will be the two holding it to the manifold. And then I imagine the manifold will be binned. Unless I put it aside in a pile of, I'll get something made for that someday. Now, This is so loose, it's one of those stages you just want to grab it and spin it by hand. But of course, if we did that right now, we would end up burning our fingers. Well, when I say our, I mean my fingers. You guys might get a bit of a laugh at me going, oh, 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 oh. But that's not happening today. Thankfully, I don't need to worry about that. And there we go. Another bolt. Right, so I've got one, two, and three. I believe that's all of them. Ooh, the top's actually loose. Oh, look, a spider in the float chamber. There has been one at one time. It's now long, 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 long gone. So Okay, that scrape out because that's just full of cobwebs. I'm actually surprised this is pretty good condition. Yeah, it looks terrible from the look of it, but it's actually not. I think if we cleaned off this old, the remains of the old filter, which is actually coming off as I'm speaking, you'd have a top of a carburetor that's some use still. Now I was being quite cautious there to where I put my fingers on the one of this blooming carburetor. There we go. That doesn't look too bad actually. A slight build up of rubbish in there. But really, that's actually came up quite clean. Well, quite better than what I was expecting it to. I mean, if we give this a What I'm using here is a brush, br a brush, a brass brush, brush, and that's just softer than steel, so it gives me a fighting chance to get some corrosion off of it. Mm, that's not too bad, actually. It doesn't look too bad. It's came off without much hitch. So yeah, that's one off. Now if we pick off some of this gasket. The next one, we've got this little bar, which if I remember right from the, I've rebuilt a Solex for the Mark V because it's the same carburetor as the Mark V. And that's just the only reason I've got a spare because I bought one as a spare for it <laughs> before I'd known about the Mark VI, or Mark VI? The 325 even. There we go. That's that out. So we've got a pin for that. Now, there's a brass float in here. Or a copper float, is it? I'm really hoping... Oh, it's actually in amazing condition. 
the way you test these, and it's all stamped with Solex and it'll have the number on it and everything. But the way you test these is put them in boiling water into a cup, and if they start bubbling, they've got a leak in them. This one actually feels like it could be okay, but I don't need to test it anyway. So, I'll take that to bits. Now we're down to this part. I'm going to swap down the size of vice grips I'm using to the littler ones. Since it's slightly more delicate, delicate bits inside here. Alright, so what I think I'll do is, we'll give it a heat again, and we'll use the screwdriver to try and get that jet out. Because we have to be careful with the jet, because it's brass. Oh, I'm still getting used to this kit, you see. Right. So we'll give this a heat, a bit of check, that's the right size for there. Look at that, that's exactly what I was wanting to happen there. I really am a fan of this kit, it's made taking things to bits a lot easier. Now. What we need now is the pointed pliers, which are right in front of me and I've just totally missed them. So put that jet in there. Now that's probably Imperial. Oh, it's that. The look of that, it's actually the size that I pick up first out of the thing. Look at that. A little bit of heat, and away it goes. I'll turn that off and I'm going to thank some subscribers because as I'm making this video there's subscribers popping up on the channel which is quite good because today I released the new the latest Bond Bug video now I'll put those two there so I know they're from the same bit right we've got a jet here what I'm going to do is so it's easier for me to get the thing out, I'm going to turn the carburetor around. Like that. So I'll have a jet here, I have a bolt there. So before I heat it up that torch again, and get the spanner for that. Oh no, look, that one's coming out itself. That's a bonus. So that, I think, is the drain plug for the for something. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, it, it hides a jet, if I remember right, actually. In fact, it is a jet. So that's one bolt, as you can see there, with a jet in the end of it. So we've got that one out. Next one on the list, we'll do the top one that I've turned it round for. And we'll try the idle screw as well. What are we doing for 16 minutes so far? Well, this video will be up to. I imagine we'll be sitting about 30 minutes by the time we've done this. Oh. As you can see, I'm still getting used to this kit. Right. Let's try this one. Not totally convinced with. That feels a better flame. Yes. It's 
wonder what I've seen bouncing about. I think it's bits of dead spiders <laughs> flying about in the in the float bowl. Right, let's get this one off. So there's another jet. Let's go down to the, this one. If this comes out, I'll be surprised because they normally are snapped anyway. On well, Zeniths, they are. I've actually managed to have a broken car because of one of these once. Oh. Don't spin. Don't spin. What's annoying is I'm right handed, so trying to. Yes, I think that's just, I think it's came all the way out. It has. There's that one off. Now we do have two bolts in there. I do not have a clue what this bit here is supposed to be like. So we'll, we'll tackle that in a minute. I think... What we'll do is we'll turn that off, we'll go round to the other side again. I'll hold it by the manifold. That way. And we'll tackle this nut in the middle, which... Yeah, that's probably the best way of putting that. There's not really much else to say about it. So we'll go for this one here first, an outside edge, which I can tell you what it does. It was the nut that controls the choke. So we'll, we'll go back to the bigger, bigger um, doohickey, these, for this one. Now before I give it a right heat, I want to see if I can get a hold of it somehow. As you can see, this one is a lot more trickier to get a hold of because it's on a little leg and I just know as soon as we put any pressure on this, it's going to snap. Alright, we've gotten a hold of it. We'll give it a heat. I'm sure you guys can see what's happening as well as me, but that's one of them. Come on, make it past that. Yes! I'm genuinely surprised that that's coming out. Right, so that's one. Just stripped its threads a little bit when it's came out. So that's that. The next one is a real funny little thing. There's actually four little. I was trying to remember how these was held on, but I see it now. They're the little screws right at the very end of it. But we need to get that. There's a casting off on the end of it. Well, near casting, a bit of steel. Steel. I think we might have to cut this because I cannot see me getting a hold of it or anything. So we'll, we'll try giving it a tap first, just to see if we can loosen this rust off. So I've loosened some of the rust off, I think I'm just going to cut it with a hacksaw but I'm going to be gentle with it and cut it this way so that it doesn't damage anything 
No, that's okay. It's still not landed anything. Right. Now, hopefully, aha, like that. Now that, is that not off? So that's that in there. And if I remember right from the last one I built, there'll be a steel plate still to come off of here. So the next job is to not just knock the carburetor about in the the vise. We'll put that in place. Yeah, there's the steel plate. Now, the good thing is, the way I've cut this, it's not damaged any of the threads. It's a, basically, the best way to describe it is it's a thread that's at the sides cut off at both sides. So that when you pull the choke, as you'll see there, it means that it won't split. So the way we've cut it is down the sides so it's not disturbed any of the threads. So, now we're on to the fun bit. Fun bit? I think it's all the fun bit, this one. Right, give this a quick brush. Brush down. Now there's four screws here. Pretty sure this is going to be far too big as it is. But it just means we have to go down a size to the next screwdriver, which should be this one. I think so. But to be sure, I've also got a selection of ones I keep in the screwdriver that's in the box. That's none of those. We'll just double check before we use just the the idea of one. So here we've got a selection. This is a five. It's possibly a five. So we'll use a five flat head. And this. And we'll give it all a heat. And we'll see if we can get these to come off as well. And if they come off, it's nearly stripped. Right, now this one's will be tricky because they're not as simple to get to as the others we've done. And I can see these not coming off to be quite honest. So we're heating up that. Oh my god, it, it's it's actually moving. <laughs> that's kind of a major surprise for me. So that's one out. Now we're on to the next one. Ooh, and it's, it's getting these out is going to uncover another bolt we can attempt. This must be the one that drains the fuel out. Get the carburetor before I put the before I put the heat into it. Perfect. Get the screwdriver to fit because you've only one. If you mess it up in the first attempt, that's it. You will not manage to free these off. And I'm totally serious there. If, if you mess up the first attempt, believe me, trying to free these off after that 
oh my, real struggle. Because you'll, you'll never get the screw head to sit as good as it is right now. So I'm heating up this again. I'll give it a good heat before I... There we go. This thing's actually dropping off. We'll put that in that metal box. Whoa! Well that's just came off and it's now in there. So, in the edge of this I think it's just more rubbish. Spider web. No, it's rust in this one. This will be the remains of the air filter. Right. So we're getting closer to where the, the last few bits of technology, I guess, in the carburetor is. We've got a little bolt here. I'm pretty certain it's going to come out. So, yeah, what am I looking for? I think it's this one. 7 sixteenths. It's not. Let's put that one back so we don't mix them up. And I had the half out already, I'm sure. But I, I do have a habit of moving them about and then forgetting. So I've got this here, which is a half. Which doesn't fit. So my guess is it will be Whitworth. So the Whitworth spanners are still out, thankfully. There's only one vehicle here that really is Whitworth, so they stay in it. And my guess would be quarter inch Whitworth. Nope. This is where I'm going to guess the next one and it'll be wrong as well. So I'm pretty sure it's not for the 3 sixteenths. I think I've messed this up and it is actually one of the sizes we've used already. I mean, that's 7 sixteenths, but it doesn't fit. Let's try a good 12. There we go. Look at that. Turns so easily, that. So, that's the drain plug. Wasn't sure if that would be hot. It turned out it wasn't. Right, so now we're down to this one. So if I spin it round, you'll see it. That little rusty one here. Again, it's the same idea as the, the one we've taken off at the other side. It is a two-piece... Um, well... A slotted nut. I'm going to give it a chop and see if it happens. Nothing really. This one is a fair mess. I should have guessed that would happen. Now, by the looks of things, I can just about see where the the lines in it are. So, I will have an attempt at it. This is one of these ones that is really awkward to do. more so awkward because that's hitting the, the bit I'm trying to cut. I'm going to try it freehand. It won't be easy to do this. We'll try it there, see if that's enough to split the knot even. Something's happened. Not enough to split it though. Um, we'll try it again. It's 
really not a good one to get into this. <laughs> the other side was really lucky, it was just sitting at the right angle to get into. I think we'll try this one a different technique. If I can get this to sit a way that I can get into it. So I would say that way. So I'll see if I can just clamp it onto the pipe. So, as we've already said, the pipe is scrap. I'll try this side of it again. We'll try it sideways. Ooh, is that it? I'm hoping it is. Again, I've not went further than that half spindle. Well, I'm still stuck to it, this looks of things. This is a real tough nut, this one. Right, we're, we're cutting some more off it. Genuinely, I'm not overly surprised at this one being an absolute pain. Right, try again. There goes the nut. About time. Right. I'll turn it round again so you can see it again. So, on a here, there is a washer, I believe. So I'll need the right screwdriver now instead of my hammer screwdriver. There we go. So we want that off of there. Then this is the stop. So this is when you put the throttle down, it'll hit this and stop you just going all the way around. This one's really stuck. Now I could put penetrating fluid on. No, there we go, it's off. As you see, it's shaped so that it'll only go so far around. Right. That's that off. I guess... That leaves us down to the two little ones that was leaving to last. So we'll clamp, clamp it that way, I think. And I will cut them from here and see if I can get this one to come out. Again, we would normally try and get these off, but the bolts are totally, absolutely knackered. That's gotten easier, so I think we've cut through it. By the looks of it, just not quite through at all. Because I can see a little blooming bit still sitting there. We might be able to chop it off with the this hammer. This hammer and the screwdriver that I broke some years ago. Oh, 
That's quite blooming a tight fit. This is exactly what I'm wanting. I've got a nice sharp chisel here. Aha! Uh -huh. It turned. When it turns, that's even easier. So when it turns, all we have to do is spin it a little bit. Like that. And off it comes. That's just for the bin. There's no point keeping a uh, bolt that's just going to be annoying. To say it the least. The other side actually does have a slight threaded bit on it. So, what I'm going to attempt to do with it, I think, is get a, give it a heat and get this stuck onto it. Not that way. Let's do it from this side, because that'll counter against me turning it and just moving the carburetor across. Oh, it's got a spacer on this one as well. That's another good thing to see. Right. How are we doing tight? Whoa. That's actually went past quite fast. So, we'll use that one. This one might actually be quarter. No, quarter's bigger. I'll just try 3 sixteenths before I... No. Right. Whitworth set stays with Mark V from now on. So, half inch. We'll use half inch on it. And we'll see how that goes. It's quite a tricky job doing this. Let me just take you down so you can see. Because I forgot it was up here, now it's down here. So. Right, that's just spinning. So I think we'll do is we'll try. And just heat the bolt while I also search my toolbox for another spanner. Ideally, not that one. Right. This. Yes, that fits it. Like that. I'll put that in that metal tr box or metal drawer, even. Now, although this has decided it will come off, that's not just the end of the good news. Because it now means the car. Oh no, the carburetor's moving as well! That means there is good news because that will just come straight up. And should just come off the top of the bolt now. It also means if anything goes majorly wrong, we just have to cut the thread and the, the carburetor will just drop off. So what's that? That's nearly an hour we've been out here. And we've got the carburetor disconnected. And 
there it is. Now, I'm not done with this manifold yet. I'd quite like that spacer off. So we'll use the gasket scraper for that one. So I'm very good at moving around. When I'm doing up jobs in one location, I like to always give myself a bit of a challenge and just move tools about. So the gasket scraper I must have put into another drawer and then close the drawer. Which is very typical of me. No, no, look, it's not even in a drawer. It was down below the drawer that I had open. Right, so what we'll do is let's just take the gasket scraper and just go in for a further gasket. There we go, like that. Taking that spacer off. Now normally I would give all this a clean up, but there's no point, because that is really for the bin, I think. I don't think I would want to chance that in any of my cars. So, yeah, bin. There is a little brass nut at the back of it. We should maybe take that out. As you never know, it might turn out to be something that I will need. So, I'll use the vice grips on it. Oh, this one actually has turned very easily. It's also very soft because I'm pretty sure it just squashed a little bit when I put the vice grips on it. It did. We'll give it a. We'll easy sort it out. It still freely turns in there, so that's the main thing. So that can go into the box of bits. This is going to go into my scrap bin. Now we've got the carburetor here, which shows us everything. And how, um, shall we say, what I'm going to do is gently, I'm not gripping it properly, it's just gently in the vise. I'm going to take this onto the spindle, as if it was the throttle. It's not even offering to move. So we'll give it a little heat. Keep doing that. Of course, on this side, this should be the spindle here. And all I'm doing is, is heating up the shaft and basically trying to work the throttle spindle with my vice grips and it is actually moving as you can see they are with the vice oop. you can see with the vice grips moving Very squeaky. What we'll do is, since the the, the throttle butterfly is now the right way around, we can try seeing if these brass screws will come loose. Yeah.
yeah that's both of them now just so they don't disappear I'm going to tighten them back up again like so might actually do is just take the brass I'll just probably take the brass out of there because that way we know it's going to be safe and it's not going to seize up again because it's definitely needs some oil I would say alright so that's released pliers one, there's two little brass screws, turn that round and as it is that should what's happened there is it's quite stiff because it's stiff it's just pulled up a little bit and then stuck so I'm going to use the little vice grips because they'll get a better grip of it while I'm holding it. There we go. That's it out. And what that should mean is if I give this a oh, stay there. It should mean that this, this uh, very squeaky shaft should come out. Oh, not the best trying to pull something in a vise when you're not pulling it too tight. I mean, it doesn't have to come out now that it is moving very freely. We'll just leave it for the moment. There's no point upsetting the upsetting the thing. I'll just get some more oil in it. Something is actually starting to move on it though. There we go, look. I always thought I was one thing. That's a shaft suit. A throttle shaft. Now, turn it round. The choke one is all off on that assembly. So I'll just set that in there. How this comes to pieces, I am trying to remember. So we've got the four screws that come out of there. And by the looks of it, I can't quite remember. I'll have to go and study my book for this one. I think it's possibly these two bits. But I've only taken a few of these fabricators to bits. So trying to remember how they all go to together and after and it's not the easiest job to do sometimes oh oh no you don't need to take anything else off it turns out that's it right so it's basically it's just that basically held on with that so if we and not let that take off below the bond bug would have been a good one. So we've got spring clip and my torch is not to hand, that one's flat. Better get the bit that rolled below the bond bug. Oh look. A rusty spring and that's it. So that's all the bits for that, including this. So that's it. By the looks of it, we've now got a carburetor 
in bits all in one tray which is not bad for a carburetor I thought was going to be totally useless it actually still has some life left in it we'll probably give it a clean up and who knows it might be used again but anyway I think we should finish this off with the car itself being in photo because it is the car that were or the well I guess it is there this time so yeah you can sit on it there and I guess that's it for this episode of the Reliant Regal restoration so this is I think it's three or four now we're on to I lose track of them all I've completely lost what episodes I'm doing of what ones because there's so much going on but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this episode if you have remember and give the video a like and if you want to keep up to date with the latest on this Regal, the Mark V, which is, right, you're on top of it. Um, the Bond Bug, the Kitten, the Super Robin, or anything else that appears at this channel. Because there's still one other secret project that's going to be arriving here later this year. So please, 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 if you want to keep up to date with that and not miss it, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I've quite enjoyed being in the shed doing that. Been quite busy with work this last while, so doing this stuff's fantastic again. Um, let me know what you're thinking in the comments. I'm sure I've probably done something that I shouldn't have with the carburetor and the vice. But, as I said, it is purely a spares one at the moment. Unless I change my mind and use it. But it's not damaged anything. It is highly corroded because it was next to the sea air. Where this car sat in Bresse for all those years. But yeah, it's off. It's in pieces. And ready for the next stage anyway so until next time guys i hope you've enjoyed this video remember and hit that subscribe button if you have and like the video and we'll see you next time